All right, I think it's done. Oh, all right. Did you remember the frog's brain? Yeah. Did you remember the toadstool? Yeah. But didn't you use valerian? Yeah, I told you, hon, I got this. I just need to know when it's done. I mean, how do you know? It's been brewing for a while now. You take a really deep breath, and it, you can tell it's done if your tongue tingles a little bit. That's it? Yeah, pretty much. video for quite a while now, but every time I started doing it, something more time-sensitive came up. So finally, we are discussing potions. Now there are many more potions in the code than there are currently available. We're only going to talk about the ones that are available right now. Those others we will discuss if at some point they do occur. We will talk about them when their time comes. There are two main things to talk about when discussing potions. Use and brewing. First, we'll talk about use, or why potions are important. Proper potion usage makes you a better witch or wizard. There, it's just that simple. But that said, how, what kind of potions you use and how you use them is going to differ on how you approach the world. For instance, if you only go into fortresses to get your daily check off of your to-do list, then you're probably not going to need many healing potions. If you really love chasing down high foundables, the ones with the lights above them, then you're going to want a lot of Estimula potions. I know that I personally, no matter how masterfully I cast, I cannot defeat a snitch without one. So what are these potions and what do they do? I will list off their, these potions and their usefulness to me, maybe different for you. First, we are going to talk about the Estimula potion. Estimula potions come in three types. You have your basic, you have your strong, and you have your potent. They all three do the same thing, but at different levels of intensity. They all reduce the difficulty of the trace. It doesn't change how well you do the trace, just the difficulty for that trace. The basic will reduce it up to one point, the strong will reduce it up to two, and the potent will reduce it up to three. Also, they last different lengths of time. The basic lasts for three traces, the strong lasts for four, and the potent lasts for five traces. Now I need to emphasize that they only work for one encounter. So for example, if you drink a potent and while fighting a Death Eater and then miraculously defeat that Death Eater in two traces, you're not going to have the rest of the potion for your next encounter. The Wizards Niantic recently increased the potency of all the Estimulo potions, so they are an indispensable piece of any wizard's arsenal. The second potion we're going to talk about is the healing potion. The healing potion, unlike your leveled ones, such as the Estimulo potions, is a percentage. It is 35% of your max stamina. Personally, I really like this. It means that I don't have a bunch of little potions sitting in my, taking up room in my vault. The 35% grows with my need. So I do appreciate that a lot. Next is Barufio's Brain Elixir. When brewed right, you get double XP for a half hour. Really, what much more is there to say about that? Except, okay, perhaps, you, it's double XP on encounters, um, fortresses. It's not double XP on things like daily tasks or special events. These are your valuable potions, which I strongly suggest you have double digits of in your vault, because you're going to go through them. I brew these things all day, every day, but I'm a potions teacher. It's kind of in my thing. Now we are going to move on to the less necessary potions, at least in my point of view. The Dottle Draught reduces a confoundable's likelihood of absconding with a foundable. At least it's supposed to. Honestly, I haven't found them to be very useful. I have had confoundables and foundables dissipate on me when I'm using a dottle draught. I've had other items stay around forever without using it at all. 
I'm looking at you, brilliant unicorn. So, though it could in theory be useful, I haven't really found an appropriate use for it. Invigoration droughts are slightly better. They do have a use, but their use is so limited. They give you either one or three focus, depending on the potion's strength. I use them a lot back when I only had starting focus of one or two, but now that I have a starting focus of four when I'm in a fortress, I, I just don't see the use for them. I actually use them a lot, hon. Really? Yeah, as a magic zoologist, having to te heal the whole team makes sense to have some extra ones and just in case you don't have enough. Okay, that makes sense. So I guess its use depends on perhaps your profession. Yeah. So uh, I think this is done. It's been brewing a while. How do I know if it's done? Take a big, deep whiff of it. If your tongue tingles, you know it's done. That's all it takes? Yep, all it takes. <laughs> Memory potions. <sighs> Payback. And lastly, the wit sharpening potion. Its use is so incredibly limited. Let, let me just read here. They have a very limited use. They're only good for fortresses versus elite foundables, which are the ones with the gold ring around them. And they only last for three spells. Now, granted, a 50% increase on spell potency is helpful, but I next to never run into that situation. I mean... I have had the same three po witch sharpening potions in my vault for the last 10 levels. Perhaps they will be more useful once I get to higher fortress levels, but right now they're just not worth my time. So now that we've discussed the potions and their usefulness, let's discuss their brewing. Each potion has four ingredients that they need, and each one needs different ingredients. Um, each potion needs at least two plant-based ingredients, things that you can get in a greenhouse or grow in a greenhouse, which we'll be talking about later, and at least one item that can only be found on the map. I often find that I have large amounts of one thing and practically nothing of another, so I have a tendency to be spending time while brewing searching for a particular item I need for the next item I'm going to brew. Now there are two ways that you can manage your spell component inventory. One way is by going into your vault, clicking on the ingredients tab, and scrolling through your inventory. This is a great way to get a quick snapshot of what you have and to see how many you can potentially hold. But it doesn't really tell you much about who is working with what for your particular potion that you want to brew. So I strongly encourage you go in the different way. You can also manage them this different way through the potions recipe section. You click on the recipe that you want and it'll show your inventory. If you, say, find you have an exceptional amount of something and you don't need it, you can remove them from here by clicking on the ingredient you no longer need and going into the Manage option. If I know I won't be needing any witch sharpeners for a while, I can go in and remove everything for that from my inventory. It also really helps for the ratios, so you understand how much more snowdrop you need, need over bitterroot. Now, besides the ingredients, there's the actual brewing process. Your standard cauldron can handle most of the items that you're going to need. It has four slots available, so you have one brewing and three on deck at any given time. There also is the rental cauldron, which costs gold per hour. And if you try to brew a potion in the cauldron that is going to take longer to brew than you have rented the cauldron for, it'll try to charge you more money. Personally, I don't see the point of the rental cauldron. My standard cauldron does everything that I need it to do, and more. To brew a potion, simply click on the little plus sign and choose whichever potion you need to brew or want to brew. Um, it will also show your, your, you your inventory of how many potions you have of that type when you're choosing. If you really want to brew something and you don't have the ingredient, you can spend gold on it, or you can just know hey, I really need some better roots, and while the one potion is brewing and the two on deck are still waiting, go find some on the map. Finally, we come to the master's notes. These are different ways that you can stir your cauldron that can reduce your brewing time by up by 15%. Now on a quick potion, like a healing potion, it's not gonna do you much good, only like 
18 minutes. But on a long potion, like your brain elixir, the master's notes, getting those right, can reduce it by what? An hour and 48 minutes? That can totally occasionally be worth it. Depends on your particular brewing style. Also, that decreased time can be important, especially if you have a brew a particular number of potions quest in a special event. The master's notes, stirring techniques, um, their pictures are a little deceiving. For instance, the vertical line is just a vertical line. It doesn't matter if you go bottom to top or top to bottom. Same with the horizontal line. It doesn't matter if you go left to right or right to left as long as you draw a horizontal line. There's also um, the pinch in and the zoom out. It doesn't matter if you do it sideways, up and down, catty corner, as long as you are pinching and zooming. That is all that it needs you to do. Now, as you've learned, um, the three dot ones, you need to tap it three times at least, and not in the exact same spot. You need to do it in three separate spots. Now, as a professor, I do need to tell you that the best way to learn these is through trial and error. As a magic zoologist, I will tell you there's links in the description that give you where all the master notes are. That is just a cheaty half-blood prince reading someone else's cheat notes. Ooh. Either way, once you successfully complete the notes three separate times, they'll be there for you, both in your potion description and as a guide to fill it to doing the gestures when you're brewing the potion. So, you only have to do it right three times. I might be okay with that. <laughs> So, witches and wizards, that is our potions class. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like, subscribe. They really do help us out. Also, comment if you have any questions for either the professor or the mad zoologist. And as always, remember to keep your eyes peeled, your ears open, and your wands ready. So, I think this should be about done by now, hon. Uh, how do I know? Take it deep whiff of it, and if it's good, the tip of your tongue will tingle. Hmm. Don't worry about him. It's not permanent damage, and it's payback for the fire-breathing chicken incident. See you next time. Okay. Also, it helps you to understand the ratios that you're going to need. For example, how many... <laughs> Sorry! Hello all you fabulous witches and wizards out there. I am the life mate of Professor Rowan, and thank you all for watching this channel. Thank you for your support, your likes, your subscribes. They help us out a lot. One other way that you can really help us out is by going to the GoFundMe page that's linked right below in the description. Even if you can't contribute any dollars to help us, even supporting us by sharing it on social media, Twitter, any way you can get that word out there. Use some owls, get that word out there. That would be great to help us out. All that expenses go to help us get to the Harry Potter Fest that's coming up. You know, have to do the no mage way of taking a car every now and then, and unfortunately, sometimes medical bills, because I've got this bruise that just seems to weld up. I don't know what it's from, but you know, things like that happen. So if you can contribute, that would be great. Have a great night, have a great day, have a great everything. Take care.